All right, guys, another name we got to get through here, Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott. Uh, Adam Schefter reported that he has narrowed his options down to the Eagles, Bengals, and Jets, but we did hear Robert Sala rule that out yesterday, so it seems like it could just be Eagles and Bengals right now. Uh, Jay, is there a, a landing spot for Zeke that you're intrigued by, or do you think we're kind of past the point of him being this impact fantasy running back no matter where he ends up? I mean, if he ends up on the Eagles and just with the amount that they run, the amount of scoring touches that he's going to get the fact that they've got Rashad Penny who's a huge injury risk then I think there's a pathway for Zeke being fantasy relevant like he's probably going to be fantasy relevant as a touchdown dependent back wherever he goes but I mean the days of him being a workhorse back for some team is just done I think I would agree with that although Cincinnati becomes interesting as well I, sure. I, I there's a non-zero chance that Joe Mixon is on another team yeah come uh uh come fall so with the fact that um with the fact that Samaj P. Ryan has moved on, he's now a member of the Denver Broncos. And so Mixon's also dealt with injury issues as well. So if he goes to Cincinnati and Mixon leaves, for one way or the other, there, there's talks that he could potentially be cut or traded. He's got some off the field issues that he's dealing with as well. They were, you know, listen, they have Chris Evans, they have former Texas AM great Travion Williams. I love Travion Williams. Um, I've always waited for him to sort of get a shot. But like, there's not much there beyond Joe Mixon where you would feel like if Ezekiel Elliott, even if Mixon stays, could he have some Ajay Pirine's role sure. from last year with maybe a little bit more touchdown equity given his skill set in the red zone? Uh, and obviously, if anything were to happen to Mixon either in season or between now and the start of the season, he becomes interesting as well in Cincinnati. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on see where Zeke ends up, of course, and what kind of workload he could be seeing next season. And another player, another Maybe he goes impact. to Baltimore. Maybe they decide no quarterback. <laughs> just they all just, running backs. Like, direct snap. All direct snap, <laughs> yeah. all running backs. It would be very just five different, very yeah, yes. Just five different running backs. The Snoop just, Huntley led Ravens offense in, yeah. in 2023. Hey, Zeke wouldn't have fumbled the uh, the dive from That's Huntley fair. at the goal line against Cincinnati. Ravens might be in the Super That's Bowl fair. if Macy, Zeke is playing quarterback. Macy, thank Another high-profile veteran that is expected to be on the move, guys, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins. We've talked a lot about him. Uh, MMQB's Albert Breer reports that the Cardinals have now granted him permission to speak to other teams about a potential trade. We don't exactly have the list. We've heard rumblings of the Patriots, and that was kind of shot down. We've heard all different kinds of the rumblings Chiefs, of Hopkins. The, the Chiefs that's the keeps one. Com- that's the, the Chiefs that's keep one. coming in, and you're that's just sort of like, yeah. that's the Bills, like yes. that's the that's the one where you're trying to go, ooh. Yeah. 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 Put DeAndre yeah. Hopkins in the Juju Smith-Schuster role. <laughs> so bad. So look at what yeah, Hop did. Little upgrade. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know how. I think Hop. Hopkins would play a lot more outside than and then Juju did, but still, regard. I mean, like mm. he'd be in the like he's obviously a different player. He doesn't have the speed of a Tyreek Hill, but the fact of the matter is, is that Hopkins doesn't win on speed. He wins on size. It went. I mean, like I just can imagine, like you know, J- Patrick Mahomes is saying, like, Hop, I'm gonna throw it. Hey, Hop, I'm gonna throw it somewhere near you, and you, you just come go. You go yeah. up and get it, and I'm sure DeAndre would be like. Yeah, get it somewhere near me, and I'm coming down with it. Which is, by the way, what happens. Yeah. That, I, I mean, that would be – oh It feels like what's notable right now with Hopkins is the Bills and the Chiefs being in this. Hopkins is going to be a big-time fantasy-relevant player heading into next year. Coming off last year, the suspended year, when he came back and looked good, as we always discuss. Yeah. But Bills or Chiefs, guys, I mean, he'd be playing with an elite quarterback. Well, and, by the way, I mean, you just think about it from his point of view. Like, he's made a lot of money over his career, but, like – a lot of years in Houston. It hasn't gone the way he hoped for in Arizona. But now here's a chance to possibly win a Super Bowl, whether he goes to Ari- where they go- if he goes to Bif- Buffalo or he goes to Kansas City or if there's another elite team. But feels like DeAndre Hopkins is going to be able to have a say in sort of where he goes. And so that becomes really interesting if he's on one of those superpowers in the AFC. Yeah, and he's like he's only 30. It's not like he's 35 yeah. years old. Like he is only 30, and also he didn't have a full season that he's coming off in terms of wear and tear, even though he got a ton of targets. And yeah, particularly what he showed in those first two games back where he had you know over 100 yards in each of them and just looked like Nuke Hopkins yep. again. Um, and just the highlight reels, like the touchdown he caught against Minnesota, like he looked like the same guy. And so, yeah, he's going to be, I mean, if you put him in the Gabriel Davis just in that slot and move Davis across where Davis is now third in the pecking order, that team suddenly is just an absolute monster. Yeah. Ho- Hopkins expected to be on the move. Two wide receivers that are not anymore. Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Broncos coach Sean Payton told Tom Pelissero, we're not trading those two players when mm. asked about them. I don't know if we can trust Sean Payton yeah. at this point. <laughs> it's going to be the <laughs> I mean, you were like, you're like, oh, they're not on the move. What do you mean they're not on the move? Just because, yeah. because, I didn't because every the NFL price coach always tells the truth. Yeah. I, I, look, the fact of the matter is, is, again, this was something in my combine column. I was told 
they are quietly shopping Cortland Sutton. They, I think they'd prefer to move on from Sutton more than Judy for whatever reason. Money. But the fact, yeah, I mean, I think that that's partially it as well. Um, but make no mistake, if they got a good offer for one of these guys, they're doing it. Now, they've said they still want a one for Jerry Judy, and you think about some of the, whatever, Elijah Moore got a fifth. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, some of the, when you look at sort of the wide receiver market that's out there, it feels like it's pretty soft, and I don't think you're getting a, a one for Jerry Judy when you've seen some of the price tag of, of some of the other guys that have been in the move. Not that Elijah – I mean, like – Hopkins won't get no, a big Hop, package. You, no, no, exactly. So, why would Jerry Judy? And people would say money, but it's, you're talking about the impact of the player. Right. J I mean, yeah, I think the Broncos did not get the price they wanted for either of these guys, like you said, Barry, and now they're holding on. Yeah, but I, I think that – That could change. Yes. It could certainly change based on what draft happens night. on draft day and everything like that. I think to your point, the big takeaway here and the thing to remember is that coaches do lie. They lie yes. all the time. Yeah. All uh, the time. Pete Carroll, his injury reports, like you just can't read anything right. into it at all. So I would not be expect, wouldn't be going out and just locking in the big Jerry Judy, call it the Sutton Denver Broncos jersey purchases for the family. Let's just see where they are at the start of the season. I also feel like this is just kind of a, let's see, you yeah. know, let's, you know, let's, let's blank around and find out kind of year for Sean Payton in, in Denver, right? Well, that's the actual official slogan of yeah. the Denver Broncos. Let's blank around and find season. out. Like, no, it's, it is a little bit of that, right? I'm just, I feel like he's just like, we'll let's see what we, can out. we, can we revive Russell Wilson? Can we get him back? Can we, let's see what we have in our offense. But you know, I, they'll either be like, Hey, we've got something here and we're going to build upon this or you know what? Hey, we're going to tear it all down. We're going to get rid of Russ. We'll get rid of the receivers and we'll, we'll start anew. Uh, a year from now if it just doesn't go as well as planned. Another coach that spoke was uh, Colts head coach Shane Steichen. He said Gardner Minshew is coming in to just compete. We've we'll heard the Colts connected to Lamar. We've heard the Colts connected to this quarterback class. They obviously signed Gardner Minshew as what we would presume to be a backup but the head coach not writing off that Minshew will have opportunity. Also just a bit of a slap to the face of Minshew with uh, the phrasing. He's just in here to compete. Like, yeah, yeah. If he ends up with the job, not great. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that we will definitely see some Minshew at some point this season. I think Minshew has shown that in spot starts, he can be fantasy relevant. Think back to the game he had against Dallas this season, filling in for Jalen Hurts, where like, he throws picks, he makes bad throws, but he also compiles a lot of stats and makes uh, a lot of the big throws too. So, yeah, I mean, the Colts are just a weird situation at the moment. Like, coming into last season, the Colts were minus 110 to win the division. They were favored over the field to win the AFC South. And now it seems they're rebuilding, but they've still got a lot of talented veterans. They've still got Michael Pittman, Jonathan Taylor, offensive line that's not good, but Quentin Nelson's there, it'll get better. So they're just a weird team to track, I think. I agree. Uh, I agree. And we'll, so we'll see. I mean, like, just, we don't know... Um, I would not feel great about uh, I would not feel great about the Colts overall if Gardner Minshew were their starter for the year. No. But if if he were for the for what we care about, Gardner Minshew is good enough that he can get the ball to Michael Pittman. He can support a top twenty fantasy season for Michael Pittman. He can keep the offense on the field enough that Jonathan Taylor will be fine. You know what I mean? Like he's not great to your point. He's fun. But the NFL is more fun with Gardner Minshew in it. It yes. just is, right? He's certainly fun. He's fun to watch and fun to root for. I agree with you that the skill level is not, you know, you know what he is? He's, he's a poor man's Taylor Heineke. Is what he is. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, not so what so you want in the, in the same, player comparison market. Same income bracket for me. <laughs> yes. Those two. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the like, you know, I, I don't think. Some Heineke. But, yeah, he, that's what he is. Yeah, like, he's, he's, he's Taylor Heineke, he's which not, is like, yeah. he's like, could you get by with him? You could. Uh, but, ideally, you're aiming higher. Yeah, he's not like that much worse or worse at all than Carson Wentz was a couple of years oh. ago where it looked like everyone the Colts were everyone's like AFC sleeper with two weeks to go in the season with Carson Wentz if, if they have to go in I mean like I don't think I don't think Gardner Minshew is any worse than what they had last year like I think Gardner no. Minshew is, no, is, 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 is as good if not better than Matt Ryan and uh, you know whatever Sam Ellinger and Nick yeah. Foles oh Nick Foles, Nick Foles. I mean right, I forgot about Nick, the Nick Foles everybody experience. does like so did planet Earth. Yeah, for the <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, Sorry, so Nick. by the way, Carson Wentz still available. He's There's out a there. Chance, Cindy. <laughs> There's a chance for a union. Let's make it happen. Uh, yeah, I think also if the Colts draft a developmental quarterback at that fourth pick, or even if they trade back, I mean Minshew is coming with Steichen from Philly, so of the leg up, understanding the offense, it might be Minshew out of the gate. Minshew and team. Richardson seems so, like a reasonable. Yes, tandem. that's he's your bridge guy, Minshew, right? To the if, rookie. Yeah, I mean, be interesting to see Unless if they get Lamar. If, if yeah. <laughs> well, if they get Lamar, but just – it's just – do you think Richardson lasts till four? I think somebody's going to trade into Arizona's pick at three for Richardson. 
Right. That's what I do. Th- so I my do point believe. is, is maybe he get they get Levis. Yeah. yeah. And once that's a guy that's sitting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes back to Minshew, I think, is going to play out right, of the okay. game. Okay. A more noteworthy one here, guys. 49ers GM John Lynch said Brock Purdy has earned the right to be the starter in 2023. Here we are. And they signed Sam that. Darnold. How, why is that shocking to you? Because they spent the third pick in the draft on Trey Lance. I, I, yes, they did. But you know what happened? Trey Lance got hurt, and Brock Purdy went undefeated and led him to the NFC Championship game where then he got hurt. But, like, when you hear John Lynch say he's earned the right, the statement. dude's earned the right. Big statement. Has Trey Lance lost the right? Trey Lance hasn't played. He's the third pick in the draft. They has he earned of- the right to play? He has not. You know why he hasn't earned the right to play? Because he hasn't played. I think I'm not saying it's his fault that he hasn't played, but I'm just saying the dude hasn't played. How do you how do you go to a locker room? How do you go to a locker room and say like, listen, I know this guy stepped in and went un effing defeated mm-hmm. for like to win six, now six and zero, oh, yeah. six and zero, oh, won a playoff game. And, you know, who knows what would have happened in the championship game. But, you know, how do you say, like, but we're still going back to the guy that's played, what, three games in the last three years? What was Trey Lance played one game his senior year. Yeah, and, showcase game. He didn't he have played, a season. Right. The North Dakota State, he had the yep. showcase game that they did for him. Yep. Then he played one game. He played the, the Chicago game as a pro and maybe. He's barely played in three years. And, right. And he only, he didn't have a huge. Brock Purdy has played more games as a yeah. pro. Than, than uh, Trey Lance has. And was a four-year starter in college. Thank you. I just Here. thought the, the way that they would frame it would be that it's going to be a camp battle and that there would be, it would be figured out that way and then you can go with Purdy after that. This seems like they're just completely writing off Trey Lance. The fact as well, like Sam Darnold That's surely wouldn't part. be signing to be a third stringer. I would bet that the Trey Lance isn't on the roster. Uh, it feels I like he's going to get traded. traded. That's how I feel about this. Trey Lance gets yeah, traded? Yeah, you sign Sam Darnold. Yeah. And I mean, where what is the role for Trey Lance on this in this organization anymore? Yeah, I just don't understand the Donald side. You don't. Sam, That's the part to me. Yeah. If so you went to camp and said, Purdy, except no, yeah. the, the the Sam Donald signing is is like, is hey, Trey Lance either isn't healthy or isn't ready for prime time. Brock Purdy isn't healthy in time. But you know what? Sam Donald is a professional NFL quarterback, like or whatever. Like Kyle Shanahan could be like, you know, listen, I made Brock Purdy a thing. I made Jimmy Garoppolo a thing. McMullins. I can make Mullins a thing. <laughs> CJ Beathard completed passes in my offense. I can make I can I can work with uh, Sam Darnold. They needed a veteran that wouldn't completely if if the two guys they have, if, if Purdy and Lance aren't ready, uh, because of health reasons or or in Lance's case, just you know, uh, uh, seasoning, if they're not ready, then they needed a veteran who wouldn't completely derail it. So whether it was whether it was Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield, or Gardner Minshew, or Taylor Heineke. They needed a guy like that. They needed one of those. Jacoby Brissett would have been fine for them as well. One of those guys. They needed a guy like that that would have been fine. And so I, I, how many options did Sam Darnold have? I mean, Sam Darnold, like, crashed out in New York, crashed out in Carolina. To me, this is a great opportunity. I, I, Sam Darnold made the right move. Because yes. even if I can get two games under Kyle and look like maybe I got a chance to resurrect my career here. Um, but uh, I think that the the Niner, the only argument for Trey Lance is um, is that hey, we would be embarrassed because we we traded up for him, we we gave so much draft capital, we gave up to to get this kid. But the fact is, is if they feel like they can win with Brock Purdy, and I I don't know why they wouldn't feel that way because they did. They won six games with the guy. Yeah. All six, you know, every game he started, he's, he won in the regular season. And a playoff game. Right. And a playoff game. Like, then you're just like, okay, well, fine. Yes. We, we overpaid for Trey Lance. That was a mistake. But by the way, we also got a starting quarterback with the seventh pick, you know, the, 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 the Mr. Mr. Irrelevant, Relevant, yeah. right. You know what I mean? Like we've hit on Brandon Ayuk and you know, they've hit on so many guys late in the draft and like whatever, Elijah Mitchell was a sixth round pick. Like they, they've, they've got so many hits you know, from late in the draft and free agency that they can afford to take a little egg in the face for their first-round pick. It's going to be fun seeing Trey Lance in a Ravens jersey um, in a few months. Feels <laughs> like that's coming. All right, guys. The we also just called. They said, hey, we're out on Trey Lance. <laughs> Trey Lance. They just they just Do just not ask that. us. Yeah. We're telling you now. Don't even call. Like, we're not interested. By the way, in case you missed it too, we're also out on Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah. It's like they interject every yeah. conversation yeah. with that. We're like, not we, trading for Patrick. And then somebody Mahomes, three-way. Right? The Falcons yeah. three-wayed into the call. It's the same with us. <laughs> right. Please. We're playing Desmond Ritter. We're playing Taylor Heineke. Yeah. 
Guys, we also heard from Bills coach Sean McDermott, uh, who wants Josh Allen to begin taking fewer hits in 2023. Judy Batista got to speak to Coach McDermott and, and basically asked, how do you get him to stop taking so many hits? And if it makes him nervous, McDermott said, absolutely, yeah, I don't think that's a healthy way to play quarterback in this league. And it's undefeated that things are going to happen when you play that style, uh, that brand of football. We have to get adjusted, and it's never going to go completely away, but it has to get where it's workable. Let me throw this to you guys. Does this start to make your you know, head turn a little bit and say, is Josh Allen's running ability going to take a step back next year because the Bills – are very focused on improving the offensive line, very focused on getting back to the run game, where Allen maybe isn't this alien QB1 in fantasy anymore if they start protecting his body a little bit. Yeah, I mean... No. 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 I mean, like, <laughs> like, no. like, 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 here's the thing. Maybe, does he run a little bit less? Does he have a few less rushing touchdowns? Maybe. Does that affect us in any way? Like, are we still, are we drafting him lower than we would? No, he's still Josh Allen. You know, it's, I, I go back to the, the Cam Newton quote, you got to let the lion roar, mm. right? Whatever it was, right? You know, <laughs> I think that's, that's the quote. The fact is, is that Josh Allen last year, 22 goal to go carries over the last two seasons, that's second most among quarterbacks, 32 carries inside the 10 over the past two seasons as well. Second most among quarterbacks. Um, so the, you know, when they get in close, like a lot of times they'll call his own number and like just that's how he plays. He's instinctual. Yes. Like he, he's just it's not even designed. It's not a lot yeah. of it isn't designed. Some of it is. And, and to me, I think that quote is less about am I worried about Josh Allen's fantasy value deteriorating? I'm not like he's still going to run enough. You know what I mean? He's still going to throw a lot. Right. And especially by the way, if they end up getting Hopkins like. <laughs> Anyway, Josh Allen's still going to be one of the first quarterbacks off the board in every fantasy draft this year. But to me, it makes Damian Harris interesting. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just think that was a kind of underrated signing that happened during this free agency period. And we all love James Cook, and we want to free James Cook. But I think this is going to be a committee. And if they, if they want to take some, some hits off of Josh Allen's body, that's one way to do it is they get on the five-yard line and, hey, Damian Harris, you Watch know, you pound do. it in. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah. Two, two things. One – McDermott, what's he supposed to say to that question? No, we want Allen to take more hits. That'd be great. More hits for Josh Allen. And then two, it reminds me of what Frank Reich said preseason last year, talking about Jonathan Taylor's workload and not wanting him to have that same workload yeah. and wanting Naheem Hines to be more involved. First game of the season, Jonathan Taylor had 31 carries. Like, it just doesn't... You, you basically, you just have to ride the players with their skills. And what makes Josh Allen so special is that he's able to take those hits, that he is a battering ram, that he's a freak. And yeah. so maybe gets minimized the touch, but not really yeah, relevant. The, I mean, the purposes. fact of the matter is, and you can speak to this uh, I think better than anyone here at the table but the, the fact of the matter is is that Josh Allen is not RG3 he's not some stick you know yeah. what I mean like like Josh Allen's like a you know almost like a linebacker he's like six, he's 6'5 235 he is I mean, like he's yeah. a he's a He's a big freaking dude who can take hits like yeah. that. I mean, that, that, that's my point is, is like, you don't realize how big these, some of these guys are. There are some quarter, some mobile quarterbacks that are like, you know, like that you're like, you're sort of like Trey Lance. You're like, ah, you know, not Trey Lance. Sorry. Like Bryce Young, where you're just sure. sort of like, ah, I'm a little nervous, yeah. you know, or like RG3. That was always the thing is that RG3 was just like, he was super fast, but he was super skinny. You know what I mean? Like Josh Allen is like a, a thick dude. That was the thing with Cam Newton too. Cam Newton was just like a big, hard guy to bring down. Yeah, it's a massive part of Allen's game. And I think for the Bills, when it's crunch time and you need to lean on that, they're going to lean on that. That's what they pay him for. He, so it makes him special. Right. He, he just, you know, instincts take over. Adrenaline takes over. Like, maybe when he's on the wrong side of 30, sure. But, like, for next year, Josh Allen still has to be one of the first quarterbacks that's drafted in fantasy. Definitely. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least – being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.